やったーイッツジョーク Hello viewers and welcome back to Coco Mimi's AI presidential D&D campaign. Donald did the recap last time, so now it's Joe's turn. In the last episode,、uh, I went through a lot of pain and bad memories about my son. He was killed by vampires. Skill issue. I'm pretty sure that's all that happened in the last episode. Yeah. If there was anything else that happened, none of you saw it. <laughs> oh, Joe, do you have a comment question for the viewers? I have one for the end of the video, so make sure to stick around to hear that one. You're not going to want to miss it.、Um, my comment question is this、uh, How do you make yourself feel better when everything is wrong in the world?、Uh, let's get on to the game. Over the tops of the trees, you can make out the shape of buildings, both wooden and stone cottages and homes, walls marking the edge of property and enclosing the town, as well as chimneys crowning the tops of each structure. Alongside smoke rising into the air. The edge of the rainforest kisses the outskirts of the town, yet is close enough to hug the buildings with lush greenery and the sound of birds. Compared to when you were last here, Melodia City seems to have exploded with life, and there are now more than triple the number of buildings from before, as well as the size of buildings towering over old structures. It is now a proper town, beyond the handful of homes that once barely passed as a village. The sun has set, and darkness falls over the landscape and town. Three guards are stationed at a gate near the entrance of town, barring entry. As you approach, you hear their voices speaking to another traveler, a halfling fellow pulling a cart of cabbages. Sorry, no entrance into the city after dark. Those are the rules. You are free to make camp near the edge of the forest and gain entry once the sun has risen again. That's bullshit, you hear the halfling say. You admitted those other merchants. My produce will start to go bad. No, my cabbages! Sorry, rules of the city. Only citizens permitted re entry after dark. Visiting merchants will be seen and admitted in the morning. Same goes for you three, wanderers. The soldier looks at the party. Sorry, but you'll need to stay out here for the night unless you are citizens or secure a pass with the guildmaster. Is your party registered? Registered up? No, we didn't know there was a rule like that. What? Oh, you must have come from Salt Wish. But then, they should have given you a pass upon arrival that identified your party. Ah, never mind. Listen. We'll speak with all of you come morning, and you can gain entry into Melodia City then. You will be safe by the city walls, with guards on duty. He nods at both the party and the cabbage merchant and turns away, signaling the end of the conversation. So much for our, our plan to go right to the end. Looks like we're making camp and gaining entry to the city by morning. All right. Hey, cabbage merchant, come on and share our fire for the night. The halfling cabbage merchant jumps at the sound of Donna's voice. Yes, we'll do. Thank you for the hospitality. Damn city rules. Bah! To whom do I owe thanks? I'm Donna, the warrior woman of the Gold Coast tribe, and this is Benjen, my healing slave. Also, this is Argothrax. Uh, that's. They, I don't think I should mention that he's a dragon. I'm a simple scholar and traveler advising these two. Ah, I see. I'm Grantly, a cabbage farmer. I used to sell my produce over in Salt Wish, but I finally made the trek over to Melodia City. And look, just my luck that I made it here after dark. But at least I'm not alone out here. Thank the stars I met you folks. Is this rule about not letting travelers into Melodia City after dark new or something? It wasn't around the last time we were here. You folks must not have been back here for a long time. You're much older than you look, huh? He pokes Donna in the side with an elbow and a cheeky grin. Rules have been like this for about a decade, as far as I remember. At first, it was just to keep out monsters when the city wall was constructed, but now I guess it's old habit for the soldiers. Well, anyway. Want some cabbage? The veggies might attract giant rats in the night, so we ought to eat a bit for dinner before the rodents have a nibble. Ah, giant rats. That brings back memories. That was our first quest in Melodia. Remember Benjen? We went off to hunt a giant rat only to find that the poster wrote giant cat. Seems like a long time ago. Might you be referring to Desi's Rez and Mona's Inn? The Rez is short for restaurant. Best fish in Melodia City, I heard. You can rent a room there, but the restaurant's in a side building. I hate change. Ben k e e p all the names themselves. I can't remember all these changes. It's hurting my brain. Uh, sorry, just building up the atmosphere. Well, no offense, but I don't want to want to talk to this halfling or whatever about cabbage and fishing all night, so let's go on to sleep so he can rob us. I'm sure you're planning something, otherwise, there's no reason to stop the story from progressing. 
You think he's going to rob you? Of course, that's, that's just the sort of thing you'd pull. In that case, the night passes uneventfully after spending the evening talking with Grantley around the campfire. In exchange for sharing your fire, he gives you all two heads of cabbage each, and by morning, soldiers stationed at a regular post to accept those seeking entrance into the city. They check over the party's belongings by simply eyeing their backpacks and making note of their names. Security in the town is not extremely tight, but it appears that the soldiers are more carefully trained than before. Oh, that's it. Uh, and all right then. Thought we'd get attacked or robbed. Why do you assume the worst about Ben? He's our buddy. Experience has taught me well. Further into town, you note the new presence of a man-made canal that connects residential and merchant areas to the ocean. Small docks are built along the canal with fishing boats and other modes of water transport. From the entry at the gate, you can see that the population has also exploded in Melodia City. No longer is this a farming village barely scraping by, but is now a major destination for the entire island and welcomes visitors to the kingdom each and every day. What a lovely place. It looks so different. We've got that bow to drop off for the, the Guildmaster and the Adventurer's Guild, but what else did you want to take care of in town, Benjin? Stock up on a few supplies and then get on the road to the Goblin Village and Final Temple? I guess that sounds all right. We might also stop back in Desdemona's Inn for a fish dinner and uh, chat with Mills. I expect you don't want to hear about me talking with him, though. Ordinarily, no, but this is our grand return to the city, so I'll let it pass. A grand return, but we're still missing someone. It all feels so wrong. Don't start in on that, Benjamin, or you're not going to stop. Let's keep moving. Think happy thoughts. Think about uh, fishing. Argothrax looks about the town with a pleased expression. What fresh air to be found here. Such a peaceful town. I ought to have visited sooner rather than spend all my time napping in the mountains. Alas, no use pining over lost time. I shall follow your example through the village. Lead on. How about we go and rent a room at Desdem uh, Desdemona's Inn, then go over to deliver the bow for the Guildmaster. Might see some familiar faces along the way. Plus, we might, we might be able to pick up a short job in the Adventurer's Guild to make some coin. We've got the money to afford a room, but I'll bet there are plenty of odd, easy jobs with Melodia City so busy now. Our Gathrax can come along to help or relax in the room, whichever he wants. Perhaps if you have a number of errands to take care of, you might leave those with me and take care of your other business in town. I know that I just said I would follow your lead, but if you desire to move on to the next temple quickly, then dividing errands will be the fastest way forward. That's a good idea. I didn't have anything in particular to take care of, maybe besides checking out that apothecary that was around last time we were here. We could buy a few more health potions. I want to check with the blacksmith that was here last time we visited, and I'll bet there are even more blacksmiths now that the town has further developed. I'd like to see if they can repair the old greatsword and dagger, dagger that I found. What was the name of the metal? Again, Night Steel, something like that. Night Steel is correct, and it sounds as if we have a good plan. To the inn we go, and then I can explore around town to purchase health potions and inquire after blacksmiths while the two of you deliver the bow to the Adventurer's Guild and perhaps pick up a quick request to take care of. We can all meet back later. How will we find you after we all split up? If the two of you whistle, I ought to be able to find you. Despite my grey hair, my hearing remains as sharp as ever. Benjamin can't relate. Donald, you're like as old as I am. We're talking about Benjamin. Quit dragging your personal issues into this game. Uh, before we devolve further, shall we make our way to the inn? Yeah, let's go. We should be able to find it pretty easily, assuming the building hasn't moved. You move through town, noting how much more life is present in the settlement compared to before. The citizenry isn't simply focused on defense, but now there are plenty of shopkeepers, farmers, and craftsmen busy at work and selling their wares. Melodia City has truly blossomed in the past years. Desdemona's Inn, or what was once Desdemona's Inn, no longer sits in the middle of town, but is now part of the Merchants District, and many other business and structures have popped up as the town grew over time. Still, it is evident that the business has prospered. A sign outside the inn read Desi's Res and Mona's Inn. The main structure of the building looks to be the same inn where you all stayed, but an additional side building has been added with a wraparound porch populated with tables. 
Several people are eating breakfast and enjoying the fresh air. Maybe we ought to drop off these cabbages for them. What the heck was that halfling thinking, giving us entire heads of cabbage? He just wanted to be nice and for us to eat our vegetables. But I do think we could pass along the cabbage as a nice gesture to Mana and her family. A lovely thought. You were such a kind and generous soul, Benjen. Donna could learn to emulate your behavior more. What? I am the kindest, the most generous, the most beautiful. I ignore Donna and go into the inn. The interior of the inn is as warm and cozy as you remember. From the inside, you now see that the restaurant extension was added to the building, not just to expand the business, but to expand this main floor of the inn that serves as a tavern. Perhaps with the growth of the town, growth of the business required more space for all the new people stopping by for a drink after work. There is a familiar face at the bar. Her soft brown hair and green eyes remind you of days not so far for your party, but much further for her. Come in and make yourselves comfortable. Have a seat, if you will. If you're looking for a hot breakfast, have a seat outside and I'll come out to meet you. We were looking to rent some rooms for the night. Ah, I see. We've got some rooms open for the next couple days. How long are you planning to stay? Hmm. Ah. Have we met before? You don't remember us at your mana, right? That's me. You two look familiar, not so much this bespectacled gentleman, but I don't know if I can exactly place. We must not have made a big enough impression. Shaking my head, we came through years back and looked for Siraz's baby. Remember all that? Oh. Oh my goodness, it's been so long. I thought you all would have left Melodia. Back again for a visit? I'm so embarrassed. How could I have forgotten you all? You're the ones who provided me with that lovely pelt. She points to a large black animal pelt that is being used as a rug near the hearth. Ah, that brings us back. But Mona, you're looking very good. Doesn't look like you've changed a bit. You flatter me. Is uh, Mills around? I'd love to catch up on fishing with him. Ah, uh, grandfather has retired from fishing. He's not getting any younger, you know. My husband has taken over the old fishing boat, though. If you have time to come to the tavern this evening, you can chat with all of them. It's always busy in the evening, but the more the merrier. Sounds good. We'll do that. Anyway, you wanted to rent some rooms for a few days. How many will you need? I'll be getting a room of my own. Benjen, you and Argothrax can do what you want. Sharing a room with Benjen would be fine with me. I would not want to strain your party's budget, after all. Sure, then that's two rooms for one night to start off with, but we might, we might stick around for a couple more if that's not any trouble. Perfect. I will get things settled right away for your stay. She moves to make some notes in a large book that appears to be a ledger. You can go on up and drop off your things in the rooms if you like. Thought I might like tidying them up a bit before you go in. We've got business in town so we can come back this evening for our rooms. What do you think, Benjen? That's fine with me. We've got places to go and people to see, or however that saying goes. Are you all here to take on work with the Adventurers Guild? I'm sure your party can handle almost anything that gets thrown at you. You are right. We can handle anything, but, but we, we aren't strictly here for that reason. Just stopping here on our way elsewhere and to take care of a delivery from the Arakakra outpost to the Guildmaster here. Ah, the outpost. How is everyone doing? We don't see much of the people there since they can fly back and forth between the cities. Never much reason for them to stop in the inns or anything, though I'm sure Locke has gotten to know them better. They are all really hot now. Ah, uh, um, is that so? Just ignore, just ignore Benj, and we still haven't taken him to see a doctor. He doesn't know how to talk to people. Hey. Yeah, but anyway, we'll go take care of this delivery and make our way back here later. Since that is the case, perhaps we might split up from here, and I will go make inquiries about blacksmiths in town, as well as purchase a few healing potions. I can find my way back here to meet up later. Are you sure Mem will leave us alone, even if you're not with us? I have made it clear that you are all under my protection. She would be a fool to attack you just because I am not in the immediate vicinity. Hey, that, that reminds me. Benjen, you ought to have a conversation with your goddess, since she's the one who sent, who sent Argothrax to protect us. I'd like to hear her thoughts on Mem going rogue and attacking us. Uh, yeah. I can try to reach out tonight when I do my nightly prayers, but I'm not sure if she'll answer. Ugh, you seriously need to get a refund. 
on that class. Anyway, I'd go, all right, Argothrax will stay here and take care of poking around time for a smith and some health potions. Me and Benjen will deliver the bow and meet up back here later. Sounds like a plan. With that, the party sets off from Mona's Inn and further into the town, making their way to the Adventurer's Guild, with a bit of direction from Mona, who pointed out the guild hall down the road. The Adventurer's Guild is a building that towers over others in town, marked with a brightly tiled roof. A party of fighters enters ahead of you, laughing as an entire group. On the outside of the building, apart from the carved wooden detail all over the structure, the building sports trophies of various creatures, stuffed and mounted, as well as planters of rare herbs and plant species grown in the rainforest. You enter the guild hall, which greatly resembles a tavern, apart from the central column of the building where adventurers are gathered and peering over a packed bulletin board. Various requests and odd jobs are posted on the board, much like the requests you first saw in Desdemona's Inn. Various postings are marked with large letters from AF. Apparently, these mark the difficulty of each request. From where you are standing at the entrance of the guild hall, you can't read the specifics of the requests, but you do note that there are far more lower-ranked quests. A and B-ranked quests are few and far between. Is there a receptionist or someone we can talk to to meet the Guildmaster? It's so sexist that you presume the receptionist is a woman, Donald. Women can do whatever they want in this modern world. Joe, I didn't say anything about gender. You're the one who brought up receptionists and gender god. Ooh. Oh, I see. Never mind then. So, Ben, is there a receptionist or what? Indeed there is. Stationed at the front desk of the Adventurer's Guild is a woman with green skin and hair. She wears economical clothing for working while keeping an eye on the rest of the hall. I'll go up and talk to her. And look, Joe, Ben is the one who made the receptionist a woman. He's the sexist one. Ben, I can't believe you. I am so disappointed. What? A no, no, it's... It's okay, Ben. We all know that women are best suited to be receptionists. You were only picking the best person for the job. I'm on your side. I miss Barack. The receptionist is a small woman with green skin and hair. Her ears are pointed and her features are soft. She is busy paying another adventuring party upon completion of their own tasks. And as Benjen and Donna approach, she brightens. Finally, it dawns on you. This is another familiar face in Melodia City. Though this woman is someone you met previously in the Goblin Village. It's Zesam, the daughter of the Goblin Chief. As you approach, she grins and speaks in very clear language. Hi again, it's been so many years. Your names were, um, Donna the Warrior Woman and Benjen, a magical bard. Hello, Zessen. We thought we might see you in the Goblin Village, rather than Melodia City. Locke brought me and Grassum to town to live with him shortly after you all left. I can see that you've learned a lot living in Melodia City. Your language is really good. Where she was once wiry and wild from life in the forest, you can now see that her features have grown more delicate and gentler. Perhaps it is the effect of living around so many humans, or perhaps her new life affords her more comfort than the survivalism of the jungle. Hehe, <laughs> thank you. I practiced hard to learn all that I can, and Locke even gave me a job setting up this guild hall. Glad to see it all worked out. How's Grassum doing? He is working as a ranger and forest guide for new adventurers. Thanks to him, we have made the village safer by keeping track of dangerous monsters in the rainforest. Also, we've been working on forest trails through the brush to make things even safer. That all sounds fantastic. I'm happy that you're happy. Yes, very happy. Now, did you all want to take on a assignment? What is your party name? We, we aren't registered with the guild just yet, though we probably should do that. Yes, that would be best. Apart from making it easy to travel all throughout Melodia with identification papers, registering your party will also mean that you are recognized as a party in other lands beyond our island. It's true. So having a registered adventuring party makes travel a lot easier. I'm surprised there was no guild presence here when we first arrived. The population was so tiny, and there were so few visitors years ago that it really wasn't needed. But now we're a proper city. Isn't that great? It really is. I'm glad that you and your son were accepted here. Right, right. It's enough with that, that sappy crap. We have a delivery from the Ara, Aracocra outpost, which, by the way, is now named Maple Peak. Ah, must be the Beaufort Grassum's coming of age. One moment. 
I will tell the Guildmaster that you are here. She disappears from behind the counter into a side door. After several moments, she reappears with a smile, gesturing to the door behind her. If you'll all come with me, the Guildmaster will see you. He's really eager to talk to you after all these years. She leads you all through a small hallway into a back office, where yet another familiar face is waiting. But this time, the years are evident on his face. No longer is Locke the young soldier you met years ago. Instead, you are met with a middle-aged, bearded man, hard at work, at his desk. His clothing is fine, but not ostentatious. He is draped in cream and brown linen and wool with furs lining his sleeves and cape. Adventurers, it's been too long. Ah, uh, wasn't there another of you? We don't talk about it. Ah, uh, um, I see. I understand, I think. Ah, uh, that aside, Zesim tells me that you've brought the bow I ordered for my boy's coming of age. I'll pass it over for him to look at. Fine work, just as I expected. That'll do well for Grassum's gift. So, uh, was that it? No, that's not the only reason I wanted to speak with all of you. Zesim informed me that you all aren't registered with the Guild. Normally, parties start off at a pretty low rank, but I can register your party at a higher starting point than normal. Hmm, good deal. We are much more skilled than the average adventuring party, you know. I'm well aware. The Guild system has rankings that go from E to A. A-ranked parties are the strongest out there and capable to take on basically any request. By the way, our quest system goes from F to S. The requests don't match exactly with the party ranks. Not exactly. The easiest quests are F-ranked and usually taken by E-ranked adventuring parties. These usually are non-violent requests like weeding gardens, delivering an item in the same city or other chores and errands. E-ranked quests include things like searching for common herbs, but can also include tracking down and fighting small animals or weak monsters. Starting adventuring parties can always accept E-ranked quests, but the F-rank ones are always available for odd jobs or gathering more experience. What about those S-ranked quests? We don't really get those in Melodia, but you'll see more of them on the mainland. A rank parties might team up to complete those, as they are the most treacherous and dangerous requests. Anyway, with all of that said, I'd be willing to register you as a C-ranked adventuring party. Only C rank? We're level six, you know? We've only seen two of three other C rank parties around these parts, so it's a good deal in my opinion. You can accept quests at the B rank as well. In terms of economy, B rank quests are the best paying around here, and we get enough that they can make a steady source of income for you, though they might be a little difficult. Honestly, I'm debating on even granting you C rank, since... What? What's the matter? Well... Your party is a little small to be a C-rank party. I'd feel better if you had one more adventurer traveling with you. Uh, he has a point there. We have Argothrax back at the inn, though. He's an A-ranked adventurer if I've ever seen one. Maybe even S-rank. But he isn't a permanent member of our party. As it happens, I have a proposal that you might want to consider. There is a standing request that none of our adventuring parties have been able to take care of. You two might have more luck with it, however. Not to downplay our abilities, but if others haven't done it, what makes us seem right for the job? I've seen how you all work. You're able to navigate difficult people. The request was made by the mortuary director of our town and her assistant gravekeeper, but they are a very odd pair. A few parties have been put off by the introduction, while others simply couldn't complete the request. However, you two might have more luck, since you have experience dealing with people. I haven't forgotten how you helped Eric with Sarah. I think if any party might be able to get to the bottom of things, it's you. What are the details of this request? Our local graveyard has noticed bodies going missing. It may be the work of a grave robber, we aren't sure. We need the help of an adventuring party to investigate as well as, potentially, put a stop to whatever is being done with the bodies. In the worst case, they could be being used as a necromancy ritual. If that is the dire case, then we will need strong adventurers to fight. We'll accept it. You can leave it to us. We'll get to the bottom of this. Not so fast. I'd like you to take another adventurer with you as a trial run. I think you all will get along, and if things go well, then you can register as a formal party with the guild, 
and I'll be happy to give you that C rank. I have someone in mind for you. He was going to investigate this request on his own regardless, so it's good timing. I will call him in and give you the room so you can talk it over. He calls for Zesim to re-enter and shares with her the party's plan. She nods once and hops out, only to return again with a well-muscled dwarven fellow. It's time to introduce our next player to the table. George, come on in. Thanks for having me. Go ahead and introduce your character. We'll jump right into the story and move things along. I was worried that I wouldn't get a chance to play at all this session. You guys kept going and going. I was waiting forever. Sorry, I thought they might have gone to the guild first and then I could have called you in. Anyway. I will shake hands with the party and introduce myself. Hello, good to meet you all. I am Trege, a dwarven artificer. You said you have no D&D &D experience, right, George? None at all. Yet you chose Artificer? It's a bit of an odd class for a starting player. Worry not. I am devoting myself to crafting weapons of mass destruction, and I know I will rise to the task. Weapons of mass destruction, huh? I think we will get along fine. I am Donna, the warrior woman, the strongest barbarian in all of the land and future chief of the Gold Coast tribe. Donald, why are you playing a woman? I wanted to look at sexy portraits while we play. Aren't the NPCs enough? No, you make us look at men like when Quell became an exhibitionist in front of me. I am not gay. I do not like men. I see, I see. What about you, Joe? I am Benjamin the Bard. I am also a cleric, however. I have multi-class to offer the best support for the party. I worship Aria, the goddess of harmony. She has blessed me many times, including many times I roll the dice. Benjamin and Donna. Got it. Wasn't Barack part of the table? Treege would have no way of knowing about him unless the party mentioned it. Let's say that they do. Yeah, we recently lost a party member, a wizard named Marek. Lost him in a fight? I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, but not really. He was evil. You know how dark wizards are. Oh, I see. That is not really an accurate portrayal of events, but I don't want to butt into the role play. George, I'll fill you in after the session. I'm afraid if we talk about this too much, we'll upset Joe. Too late. I think we I think we have already started to upset him. He's curling up into a ball in the corner. Uh, maybe we should leave things here for now, then. In the next episode, the party with their new member will make for the graveyard to get a start on the request and hopefully register themselves as a new party. This stinks. I didn't even get to play because you all kept talking and talking. I worked so hard on my character prior to the session and everything. Dang it. I even thought of some amazing bombs that would blow your socks off. The ultimate weapons of mass destruction. Ah, well. Next time. Sorry that you didn't get to play much, George. We'll start fresh next time. To the viewers, thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment telling us what you thought and like on the video to boost the algorithm. Additionally, I want to offer a fun opportunity for the viewers. You all can name the party. Leave your name suggestions for the party in the comments below, and we'll read through all of them to pick the best one. We will see you all next time.